All right. Please, please read the witness. His Excellency, the former President of the Republic of Ghana, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, you have come to testify before this commission, but before you do so, customarily, you have to swear by one of these holy objects. You have the Bible, the cross, the Quran. On the other hand, you can affirm in a manner that binds on your conscience. Please, which of these would you like to use? Please see after me. I. Your full name, sir. Swear by the Almighty God that the evidence I shall give before this commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me, God. witness in his evidence. Sir, please give your full name to the commission. Where do you live? Uh, what work are you doing currently? I'm an employer. You are a former president of yes. the Republic of Ghana. But as far as your military career is concerned, can yeah. you tell the commission when you were enlisted into the Ghana Armed Forces? Uh, a year after I left school, I guess that could have been in 67 or, wait a minute, 62, 65, and 7. I guess I must have been enlisted in 67. 1967. But the records should confirm okay, whatever sir. it is. Yes. Do you recall your officer's number? 1158. Sir, as you are aware, you have been subpoenaed to produce certain articles to the commission. Yes. The commission has received evidence from Mr. Riyad Hosaifa uh -huh. that he filmed interrogations and executions of certain persons. The commission now requests that you produce to it these film recordings made by Mr. Riyad Huzaifa at the interrogation and the killing of Corporal Halidujiwa, Lance Corporal Andrews Bamfusa Kodye Ado, and others at the Air Force Base Accra on or about March 1984. If that was his claim, the closest I came to seeing anything near to what you're describing was an interrogation of one of the dissident groups. Prior to that was when some of them were brought from the bro uh, Brongahafu Sunyani region, offloaded. Then there was a Malik on the floor. I'm talking about the take. And, uh, the next scene was, um, what you call it? Sir, it's, yes. um, the commission is asking that you produce it, if you have it in your custody. I'm and trying to tell you that I don't have it. You don't have it. What I'm telling you, what I know about it, yes. I have seen excerpts of it, okay. but I cannot produce it. It, okay. should, it could either be with warrant officer, late warrant officer W. Tete, between him, and the security apparatus of broadcasting, I don't know. Sir, you, kindly go ahead and tell us. Yes, what I saw. What you saw. Yes, it was mainly an, uh, it, it must have been an interrogation of uh, one of the dissident groups. And I watched a strip for about uh, three to four, five minutes about plots and plans and who, where, who landed, what, and who provided what kind of uh, equipment, etc. But I was a little too busy, so I switched it off and told the late warrant officer, Tete, please, uh, I think I've had enough of it. Could you please uh, close it up? 
Sir, can you tell the commission who authorized the filming of these interrogations and killings? It, it could have been anyone, but I know I was one of the key figures in uh, authorizing, what's his name, uh, Mr. Hosaife, because in those days, we didn't have enough machinery within the Broadcasting Corporation to film activities that were going on around the countryside. And he was the only one who had a video equipment, you know, in those days. So he proved to be a very useful person in those days. So it wasn't just a question of filming things, activities that were engaged in within the units around the countryside, but most important of all, I would say some of these issues related to intelligence matters, like what you're just talking about. Yes. And where was he required to keep the tapes? In whose custody were the tapes to be kept? I'd, some of them I know. Those, I think, probably having to do with the social and the uh, developmental sector of activities, no doubt ended up with uh, the broadcasting corporation, some of which were actually used. But I'm sure those that had to do with intelligence must have been done at the, the BNI outfit. Whether he did them or he taught somebody else to do them, that's another matter. And uh, there was, there were two, no, there was one very personal thing that I should personally interested in and wanted to see for myself. That was when one of our fighter aircrafts landed, well, he dropped a bomb somewhere, landed on the runway, and uh, the aircraft couldn't stop as a result of which the pilot ejected. And that's when I invited him to please be kind enough to go and, to go and film as thoroughly as possible, you know, everything to do with that scenario. And uh, that, may, that could still be with me. It, it may be amongst my, my collection of uh, tapes, but a lot of those tapes really to do with social economic activities, I think must be with either the broadcasting and in this respect, I'll say that uh, it was most unfortunate that uh, um, an incident, a fire incident occurred at the broadcasting at a certain period of, of time. And that was the second time Whatever interpretations you want to put on it, if we want to analyze it, that's another issue we can talk about. Yeah. And so you, you haven't stated specifically. You believe it may be with the BNI or with RSM Tete or with the GBC? Late RSM Tete. With the late? Yes. You believe yes. it's in his custody? Yeah. If you're talking about the it one was. that Mr. Hosaifa mentioned. Yes. And I believe that's something to do with the... F the alleged Air Force Station interrogation, right? Yes, sir. Yes. And I presume so, because an aircraft landed, et cetera. There was somebody else lying on the floor who was picked up by the beach during that dissident activity, and then the interrogation of this gentleman for about three, five minutes, you know, yeah. talking about all these things, you know, but I had a lot of things to do. So yeah. that's what you're talking about. I think, I, I remember I did tell W. Teddy, I think that's enough. Please uh, send it back to whoever. And do you recall those who you saw in the video clip at the time? Um, when the aircraft arrived, there were a number of personnel, soldiers on board, and I remember, what's his name? Uh, Jack Bebley was the one who was uh, carrying, uh, what's his name? Um, Alidu, no, Jiwa, who was carrying Jiwa, you know, of the aircraft. And um, as he got down the aircraft, there was another one who had been captured, I believe, around the Pong, you know, area. I think if you look into the records, you'll get the accurate information. But you who don't was, recall the name of the second person? Yesterday I was asking, and Malik, he was called. Right. Yes. He was lying, you know, on a stretcher, you know, indulging in a lot of course invectives. And, and do you know scene. why he was on the stretcher? Did it, did the video I pick? don't know. He could have been wounded. Okay. Yes. You know, because it was an encounter. Yes. Please go on, sir. And uh, the next scene, like I said, was this gentleman. Actually, because what I did ask 
W.O. Tete, I am more interested in what the dissidents had to say because I was more interested in the manipulators, the plots and plans, who are the hidden, you know, people with, uh, uh, what do you call it, hidden motives behind them, who are the ones who are, uh, what's the word, using soldiers as pawns, etc. So in the process of the interrogation, as they're talking, we might be able to discern something out of it. But somewhere, three minutes, four minutes, telephone calls, all kinds of things. So I just went off it and told Teta. Uh, 